So welcome to the Homegrown at Home concert series for 2022. I'm Stephen Winnick. For many years here at the American Folklife Center at the Library of Congress, we have presented the Homegrown concert series featuring the best in folk music and dance from around the country and around the world. Now, normally we hold live concerts at the Library of Congress in Washington, DC, but in the year 2020, because of the global pandemic, we shifted to producing online video concerts, which we call the Homegrown at Home series. Um, and so this is now 2022. It's our third year of Homegrown at Home concerts because we're still being pretty cautious about bringing audiences together. We are very happy to have the Janusz Pruszynowski Kompania in our series this year. They're an award-winning ensemble that plays rural village music from Poland. Um, they ground their music in traditional dance rhythms, but they also add improvisation to the old melodies. So their concert, like this interview video, is online at the Library of Congress website and YouTube channel. Now, along with the Homegrown at Home concerts, we like to present interviews about the groups and their traditions. So I am here with the leader of the Compania, Janusz Pruszynowski. Welcome, Janusz. Hello. Nice to be here. It's a great honor for us. Thanks. We are honored to have you in the series. So if you could just explain briefly the vision for the Compania, for the group that you run. The vision is very simple. Uh, when we started uh, being fascinated, uh, when we got fascinated with this village music, we, with uh, mazureks, obereks, uh, fiddlers, improvised dances, rhythms, uh, nobody or almost nobody in our age, we were much younger then, mm -hmm. uh, was interested in that music. Nobody was learning it, nobody was um, going to continue this language, this musical language. So our um, aim was quite simple, to learn the language, to use the language, to communicate with the language, to play for the dance, to, to, uh, re, um, to bring through the music, to bring this word which this music evokes around. Mm -hmm. uh, to to be accepted by uh, by the masters to be their friends to help them to support them in uh, in finding their own uh, esteem their own place in in the culture so we it it be, was beginning of the story and uh, the music that that we uh, played with village master masters learned from them uh, continued improvised around is uh, sort of of language that we wanted to uh, to use for our ourselves and for ev everybody else. Mm -hmm. So, if you were young and you were among the only people in your age group who were interested <laughs> in this in this music, there was a small number. Um, does that suggest that it wasn't strongly surviving uh, at, at that time? That there was that it was you know uh, a tradition that was dying out or, or dwindling to some extent. Uh, Poland is quite a diverse country and uh, in different parts of Poland, different regions, the situation with traditional music is quite uh, quite different. Mm -hmm. uh, because 100 years ago, Poland was rebuilt from three parts belonging for a century or longer to different countries. Uh, countries, yeah. Russian, uh, Prussia, that means German, and Austria, which was Hungarian, Austrian mixed mixture. Mm -hmm. And even till now, these differences in attitude to own tradition, to, to own quality, to own uh, proud is mm -hmm. different. In the south, in the mountains, in the uh, southern Poland, uh, people used to be part of their cultures, used to accept, used to, to like to continue. It is beginning of this Carpathian chain, which is full of uh, uh, diverse, uh, fantastic music. In the West, where it, which was uh, used to be German or used to belong to Germany, it mm -hmm. is also kept somehow. And in the, in the center, in, in the East, 
which was part of Russia, it's quite a uh, hot topic. Yeah. Which was part of Russia, uh, people from the village were uh, ashamed of their their culture. Uh, there were unique places, or there are unique places where where uh, the people just were proud. Oh, I'm from here. My father was from here. We uh, we play, we sing what it was was sung before because we love it. We mm -hmm. we want to belong to. It. In in quite many uh, examples, people emigrated. Young people emigrated to cities, uh, bigger or smaller, and used to say, "Oh, I'm from the city. I don't have nothing common uh, with the village." Village mm -hmm. was for them not attractive. They want to break, wanted to break the connection. Don't don't want to continue it. But perhaps there are processes with what that happened everywhere in the world. But but here in Poland, that was very visible. Mm -hmm. So we. Uh, fascinated and we, we uh, wanted to learn and con continue the music that was not accepted anymore by uh, village and city uh, societies. They wanted to, uh, to dance, to listen, to have the music imported from America, imported from media, mm -hmm. popular music. They they uh, were even. Uh, I, I can tell the story about one one of the greatest fiddlers, Jan Gaza. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, when when we started to uh, come to his house and to learn from him and, and play together, he used to uh, put on stories on the windows. Let the people in the village don't see that that we play this this music. Mm, uh, interesting. In some years. It changed. People from the village started to uh, to enter, to come. Started to open. They uh, uh, manifested. Oh, we love this music. We wanted to 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 hear it, but we were ashamed some, mm. somehow. And that you, they thought, okay, people from from the city come and are interested. This was sort of uh, uh, certificate. All oh, this music yeah. is. Uh, uh, attractive, is beautiful. We and we are also fantastic. Yeah, that, that, that were the differences, and these these are also the processes that we consciously wanted to to move, wanted to start. Some sometimes uh, young people, which do did not not know how to find themselves, they asked us uh, somewhere, well, "Why are you coming to us? There's nothing. There's nothing uh, interesting." And we say, oh, we are coming to Jan Gaza, to, to Piotr Gaza, to, to uh, Jan Czarkowski, because mm. they are fantastic fiddlers. They they are fantastic. Uh huh. And in, in some time it occurred on their phones, their their, their uh, rings were recorded from the, the, the fiddlers. That that was fantastic social change. This this is this music is part of that. That's wonderful. Um, so. Uh... How did you personally become interested in this music? If it was um, some, if people were ashamed of it, and it was uh, it was rare to listen to it, mm, I'm very thankful to uh, Professor Andrzej Binkowski uh, and um, 1993. There, there was some somewhere in uh, in Poland at uh, some theater. Society's theater uh, festival. He was invited uh, with his film, uh, Last Village Musicians, and me and, mm -hmm. and my my friends from the group were part of the uh, public, and we were just shocked with uh, the quality of that music, with the uh, expression, with personalities of this these fiddlers. And and uh, other musicians and singers of, of all this this music and we understood okay we live in this country we travel on these roads and we did not know that such music is just by just some some kilometers yeah. and 
for, for Andrzej Binkowski, who, who is a professor of art academy, he was doing this not as a professional ethnographer, but as an uh, amateur in, in the meaning he loved that. He found, he recorded himself. And we were the first uh, group that w was so moved by, by this film that, that uh, asked him, OK, Andrzej, could you give us addresses? To these fiddlers, we will we will learn that we will we will go to them, and that that was the beginning. First first address, second address, then it it uh, uh, was moving itself. So you became immediately amateur ethnographers and eth ethnologists yourselves, going around and and learning this music. Is that was 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 that how you saw it? Um, on one hand, yes. On second hand, we uh, became steadily part of this world. Yeah. You know, because it, it, it could be different. Uh, I know different or various ethnographers. One of them uh, look from uh, the distance yeah. at their subject, subject at their informators, and say, oh, that, that is interesting, this is interesting. And, but they are like... Mm, intelligence coming to these peasants hmm. and, and uh, uh, analyzing uh, various processes and the other ethnographers you cannot recognize who is from the village and who is from the university because right. they they are so new to, to people they are uh, not not only understand what's that how it works but they uh, want to be part of of these processes and and we are the second kind kind of so-called ethnographers. We we are mm, I I uh, we name ourselves continuers, uh, pupils, students of particular musicians. It was so uh, mm, so great mm, uh, great moment to to hear. Oh, you play well. Mm, yeah. it, it works yeah yeah so you were you were you were their students um rather than being someone studying them as well so yeah i understand that um so uh so who were some of the master musicians that you went to work with um who were the musicians yeah give t tell us a little bit about them if you would um First of all, I would tell about two brothers, uh, mm -hmm. Piotr Gatsa and Jan, and Jan Gatsa, uh, from uh, Przystałowice Małe Village, then Rdzów. And they uh, started playing as a band when they were teenagers, like mm -hmm. 12, 13. Uh, it was a band of three brothers. Piotr was the, the, the eldest, he was the fiddler, Fiddle was the most important instrument then. Uh, Jan was the youngest, he played the drum. And the third brother, Stanisław, was playing uh, Polish accordion, harmonia. Mm -hmm. And they became quickly famous uh, as, as great uh, great musicians. They All they were quite little, so there were many anecdotes uh, of uh, uh, people being in doubt how they will mm. be able to play three days wedding and these three days weddings happen twice a week so they could could spend one day at home right. when, when it was the uh, full season of that and Piotr used to be always the leader of the band so his attitude was like uh, also also as a manager i remember meetings with them in 90s he was not not so full of trust to us who are who are you why you are coming to me perhaps you you would like to to sell my music mm -hmm. he was really uh, not not so open and it changed with years yeah. and young uh, was uh, he he learned playing fiddle and he played great, and he was totally open. You, he used to say, don't go anywhere. You should sleep, you should stay here in my house. And his house was really tiny, like 
I don't know, uh, 50 square meters altogether, yeah. as, as the, the, the old uh, wooden houses used to be. And he, uh, in, in some time, got huge amount of uh, pupils living there. Just, uh, we, we, we was joking, there's Jan Gatza University uh, in his uh, court and, uh, and around, and in his house. And when, all, all, when they were meeting and playing together, they first tune they played together, second tune they started to quarrel a bit, <laughs> and with the third tune they were really uh, nervous. So they 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 used to play one by one, not not together, because they uh, for 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 me that was a great example. They played together the same music in the same villages their whole life mm -hmm. and they had different uh, taste different attitude different figures different ideas how this music should work being being so new and it was so uh, common uh, mm -hmm. their next neighbor Tadeusz Jednak played totally differently uh, using even dif different different uh, notes it, it, they, they were not exactly uh, sharp this or that, but yeah, yeah, this, this, that the tonality is beyond uh, our twelve tune our scale, that right? Idea, yeah. yeah. Uh, the and, and another played still differently. Each uh, even each singer had had uh, his or her own style of singing. People in one village like this type of, of uh, making rhythm, uh, making accents. In other villages, they, they say, "Oh, we don't like it. We prefer more even way of, of playing. That that uh, cuts our uh, uh, our feet when they play like that." Mm -hmm. and so uh, the, this idea that this sort of folk music or traditional music occurred to be not precise because that was very individual uh, very individual styles based on uh, common improvised melodies mm -hmm. melodies that everybody had in, in mind uh, and and sh even they should be di different and Piotr Gatza <laughs> at the end of, of his life he he lived uh, longer than Jan being older uh, and Last uh, last meetings, we uh, I was coming to him. He was sort of exam examining me. Mm -hmm. How many uh, Jewish podcasts you, you know? He asked, and uh, I said, "Oh, yeah, I, I know this and this and this." And he used to say, "Oh, uh, uh, this there are four podcasts. Number one is this. Number two is this." He had all that uh, organized in his memory. And he was able to play uh, Mazurek or Oberek uh, in the style of uh, his neighbor. Mm -hmm. He said, oh, uh, Jan Czarkowski would play this like that. My brother, Jan, will play like this. And I play like that. <laughs> and you, you, Janusz Prusinowski, and you play like this. Mm -hmm. He was able to remember to... Uh, to hear such uh, such delicate delicate thing, things in music. So this 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 was the quality uh, difficult or impossible to to imagine from outside. This this that was the matter of being really uh, in this music. Yeah, and how did you learn? So if you're listening to your masters play um, and you're learning the tunes from them. How how did you learn how Janusz would play it? And in other words, how did you learn to make it your own? First, I I was trying, and I'm I'm still starting from this to play exactly the same notes, exactly uh, this even the same color of uh, of the tune hmm? Reco to recognize, for example, Kazimierz Metofidu with some sort of, of uh, light in these mm -hmm. in, in, uh, characteristic points when the uh, when the notes 
are uh, located on the instrument. The same with uh, Piotr Garza, the same with Jan Czarkowski, the same with other fiddlers that, that I met and played together. The, then I just play this. And in some years, I don't know, in 20 years, I see, oh, this is my version. I see <laughs> this took this shape because I was playing that tune many times for the dance. Uh, we, were, we were playing with other instruments. Uh, we were experimenting. It, it is exactly the same as happens in uh, any uh, real bands. When, when the jazz band plays, it's just communication. Oh, let's 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 do this like this. It's 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 a uh, um, it's it's in contact. In it's when the dancers, for example, the, the dance is something that shapes uh, the way of playing, that shapes the melody. When you feel that you, and when you see that you lead the dancers, that that they react to any uh, tiny uh, movement you play, it mm -hmm. is like. Uh, both re re relation they can lead you as well. You can, you, you should search the way uh, for for emotions for for the state of mind that that happens when you really uh, really are together. Mm -hmm. So um, talk a little about the repertoire of music that you play. I mean, in the in the concert, I saw there's some wedding dances. There's uh, a number of sort of um, light love songs or ditties you call them in the in the text. So what um, what's the sort of range of, of music that you look for? We used to be invited to weddings, mm -hmm. uh, and we are invited to weddings still. This is uh, for me it's great occasion to uh, to play this music in real context in real situations which is uh, which which are uh, most important mo moments for people real, really it's not only the concert not only the aesthetics uh, etc yeah. uh, it is um, we prepare these uh, ceremonies together we uh, discuss okay for uh, uh, for the parents we will propose this Mm, perhaps that that one would be better. Let's let's discuss because my mom is uh, I don't know sick or whatever. Uh, for this moment when uh, when the um, bride mm -hmm. changes or when when the flower crown changes into the cat, so it's the symbol of changing the state from mm -hmm. uh, virgin from. Uh, from young uh, girl into woman. Mm -hmm. Th this, these are special, uh, many special songs, usually sung by uh, girls or by women. But when, as we are boys, we we have to deal with that as well. Mm -hmm. And and also we we have to uh, to, to to search for contemporary senses of these uh, words of these songs for co contemporary uh, um, power co contemporary mm -hmm. meaning uh, of, of these communicates which and and this this um, these words of those songs are really really strong re really working like where the sun is uh, uh, rising the young Boy, the young John, whoever it is, whoever who is, is walking with his cap in his hands uh, to uh, um, ask his father, his mom, his brother for blessing, for blessing, for for being together in this uh, at this wedding, at this moment, at this uh, point when he lives home and starts um, his own uh, life mm -hmm. sure and, and it, it is um, it is as uh, as important then 100 years ago 200 years ago and now yeah, yeah. so so we we uh, have wedding 
uh, songs, wedding blessings in our repertoire, which are usually with uh, archaic uh, melodies, with with uh, ceremonial rhythms, mm -hmm. and we have wedding dances, obereks, mazureks, and any dances uh, have their best have their best place at wedding. This is what wedding for uh, for people was. Mm -hmm. Ceremony, the blessing, the, the meeting, the society, and the crazy wild energy that happens while uh, people dancing this wild, wilding, uh, turning, uh, crazy obedics. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about your instruments, if you would. I know, I mean, you mentioned that you started studying on the fiddle and you play uh, the fiddle beautifully in the concert, but you also play the Polish accordion and uh, hammer dulcimer. So let's talk about those two instruments. I noticed the Polish accordion, the keyboard seems different from, from other accordions that I've seen. So explain the instrument a little bit. Uh, I, I would start from the fiddle because I uh, took this instrument in, in my hands first time when I was 21 or 22. Mm -hmm. I I self uh, self learning person and this that was exactly the moment that I started learning from from village musicians. So I have know this classical back background, which helps me sometimes because mm -hmm. I uh, just no no uh, nothing nothing to change, nothing to to break. This is this is ready position, ready sound, different, uh, completely different technique of uh, of using the instruments than uh, classical fiddlers. Mm -hmm. But th this is a uh, topic for another, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> another story. Uh, and this harmonia is um, the the harmon Polish accordions called Harmonia or Harmonia Pedałowa were um, built, produced in Poland before the key accordions, uh, yeah. piano key accordions came. So the uh, on this instrument, this this uh, the first musicians, first player were transposing, were were uh, learning these tunes that used to be sung or played on fiddle before, mm -hmm. and uh, so. For, for me, it sounds much better than accordion, and and even the fingers uh, find their ways in some uh, characteristic, characteristic or special ways that sound. Mm -hmm. uh, I have two two harmonias, two accordion Polish accordions. One is from my neighbor, from my street. I when I was little, he uh, he played this pedal accordion. It's, it's it is almost. 100 years old and it, it did not find place in the concert unfortunately but the second uh, harmonia second accordion was uh, one of the most famous instruments in my neighborhood after the war and uh, in the 50s and 60s people to uh, told legends about how far this uh, the band with with this accordion was could be heard and uh, it was so precious that uh, the owner, he, when he was going to to, to leave the, the home, the house, he uh, put it into parts and hide hide it in, in uh, different points of the, of the house, not to be stolen. Mm -hmm. uh, and when when uh, accordions, harmonias became became popular in villages in thirties. He, they change the music very quickly. So mm -hmm. on, on fiddle, I can play micro tunes. I can, can play uh, notes ca characteristical for uh, fiddlers, for masters, for singers. And on that accordion, I had to play what was there. Yeah, what's given. And some of of uh, old fiddlers uh, accepted that change and were able to play both with harmonia and without. And some did not accept. They said it's not, it's not the music. We will play only with basse, bassetla, mm -hmm. and uh, and the drum. It's 
it's not our kind uh, of music, this uh, new revolutionary uh, uh, sound. So, so they kept old kind of uh, old school of, of, of playing with with bass. Bassetla is very very uh, important instrument because it is uh, mostly rhythmical instrument. Mm -hmm. and this kind of rhythm that is played on the strings is not points like bam bam bam. It is more more like waves. Mm -hmm. Wow wow. So the all three instruments uh, playing together, fiddle, uh, bassedla, and drum, built sort of common way wave, mm -hmm. a rhythmical wave that moves body of the dancer. It, it it's very special. It's to do this on the accordion is not so simple, but it's, mm -hmm. it's possible. This music was transposed and became extremely uh, popular very quickly. Mm -hmm. And dulcimer, Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. uh, this is an instrument that came to Poland both from the west and from the east through Jews. Mm -hmm. so Poland uh, was, for, for centuries, was so, sort of a uh, paradise for, for, for uh, traveling Jews and living there. And then it became also part of uh, Polish bands. Many bands were uh, were mixed, played played together. There's even even some uh, projects or, or CDs or uh, concerts, Jewish music in the memory of Polish musicians. Very very different from klezmer music. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, for walking dances, this ceremonial slow melodies that you used to be played at the beginning, at the opening of the wedding, the the sound is great. And we use other instruments, the blow instruments, because they sound fantastic. And they were used in village bands. Anybody played the instrument could be part of the band if he could play uh, the melody. Mm -hmm. So trumpets, clarinets, saxophones, uh, whatever uh, musicians could play, and it could be part of the of the of the band of the music became part of this culture too, mm -hmm. and for me, for me, it makes mm, it shows the, the colors of these melodies that bring connections to uh, unexpected places in the world. Like when when Michal Jacques plays the shawm, mm -hmm. directly sounds well. It it is Turkish or it is from the east because it. These melodies are similar. We were, ne were neighbors for 600 years, with right. et, et cetera. So, uh, and it, it's not uh, it's not our uh, the work of our brains. It is just some, something coming from the material, from sounds, from uh, specific of, of this music. Mm -hmm. So, when you were thinking of your band, or when you are thinking of the group, how how did you decide which which instruments you wanted to be in it? Was it just the people that you were working with and the instruments they played? Or did you think we need to find someone who can play the shawm uh, or, or any of those instruments? Um, when we were starting uh, Prusinowski first trio, mm -hmm. then Compania, we just met with Michal Jacques and Piotr Piszczatowski and used the instruments we played. And, uh, but in, uh, in our heads, there, there was also a question how to play this beautiful, fantastic Polish music uh, in a way that we could be not qualified as part of uh, Skansen, part of museum, part of, uh, yeah. let's say, culture which was not accepted by by the city by young generation and these experiments with shawm with uh, flute opened opened our our minds let's play the same mel melody with the same ornaments but on the flute wow what what's that and nobody nobody this negative because 
at the beginning I was talking about these differences in the region. So when we started dealing with uh, Polish traditional music from the lowlands, from the central Poland, it was not the zero in the society. It was minus 10. Yeah. Music? No, no, no. Anything else but not Polish music. Do you know it? No, I, we don't know it, but we are not interested in. And it was years and years of uh, events, meetings to open people's minds, to, to uh, stop also this communist connection, because uh, in the uh, 70s, 60s, 50s, uh, so-called peasant and workers' culture was part of propaganda. Mm -hmm. and, and the uh, intelligence just did not accept it. They thought nothing worse. It, we find our freedom in Western music, not in this uh, propaganda fake, because there were many there were many bands, just fake bands, fake fake folklore. We call it mm -hmm. with the beautiful faces, uh, always happy, and and having nothing in common with with real village music. And these real village musicians were uh, stopped to be accepted anywhere. Though at the, the, the same time, so it, it was uh, part of this Soviet way of dealing with with uh, culture. Let's break the reality and build our own, which will be fake, but we will uh, we will make it. Mm -hmm. but, so so yeah. now now the situation is is different. We uh, we have full halls. We have hundreds of young people playing this music from not not after us after Prusinowski but after real masters real mm -hmm. village masters they managed to to meet to learn to travel to get own uh, own story own music own sources own relations this this is fantastic we, this is one of our uh, greatest successes i think mm -hmm. that that we somehow managed to be part of this process of, of, of change. And and how did it happen? I mean, what were what, what do you think was the most important thing that that brought young people to this music? In nineties, uh, in the beginning of nineties, we first we organized the House of Dance mm -hmm. a, a bit. And the, and, the, and, the, and the idea of Hungarian dance houses, a bit of, on the idea of uh, Irish or any any other places where uh, village music is played not for as a concert or uh, for jury, 15 mm -hmm. minutes, but for the dance mm -hmm. and for people to uh, have joy. To dance for for their own show, not not to for show or for any anything else. So so we uh, we would organize the house of dance. We started inviting village groups. There were many many in nineties. It was mm -hmm. twenty five or more years ago. Uh, we started building relations with them, traveling, uh, and we we. Anybody who was able uh, started learning folk dancing uh, and um, and playing. We were the first band. My my first band was named the House the House uh, of Dance Band mm -hmm. to promote also also the, the House of Dance. Yeah, and this process was uh, slow, slow lasting, lasting. We, uh, oh, this is the, the, my my friends organized uh, summer camps. They also worked worked great. Mm -hmm. uh, and twenty ten, that was the year of uh, that was today Chopin's anniversary. So mm -hmm. very important year for Polish culture. The greatest composer. There were. And, and I thought if we uh, did not organize some tool 
to get into this story to tell that Chopin, for example, uh, did not uh, land on the moon and all the music he created from nothing, but that his music is uh, based, is rooted in the real and still living tradition which works, which could mm. be used as working tool for for meeting, for for uh, finding love, for for um, for for living, mm -hmm. and that that were, was the first year of Mazukas of the World Festival, and the festival was is still now it is constructed of workshops. The whole days are workshops of uh, playing instruments, singing, dancing. At, at first editions, I used to stop, for example. Uh, at, at some point of the dance night, where uh, which is the final part moment of the festival, and ask people, okay, who cannot dance uh, mazure? And half of the public used to to put their hands up. So we organized quick workshop, and they could enter, could could feel invited. But last years, I even don't don't ask because nobody is sitting. The, yeah. That the people are dancing, and I I know their faces because I know he plays, uh, he learns to play this, he makes the drums, he travels there. This this uh, this is sort of of world that was built from. And also the generations change, uh, and the next generation was not ashamed of the village. They were curious. Where are you from? Uh, what was the uh, life of my uh, grandma, grandpa? What did they sing? What did they believe in? How how was it? So mm -hmm. that, that opened the uh, the need for for reality. So are there more young people now going to the villages and and learning music there from from older players? Mm. I, I know hundreds, hundreds of them. Oh, wow. <laughs> hundreds, hundreds of them. And I um, don't think there is any master, village master, who did not have uh, pupils, did not have students. People uh, understood that, as, as we did in 90s, that the first need is to, to learn, to meet, to, uh, to have the, this common moment of life with with that person and all the the other things could be done later but this uh, this one cannot mm -hmm. so you mentioned uh the the chopin anniversary and and how you know that that brought some more attention to music and there is a, a sort of deep connection between classical music um, and some of the village traditions. Could you talk about that a little? Do people do people know a little bit about mazurkas because of the classical, uh, the way they influence classical music? I don't know about the classical music in general, but I mm -hmm. can tell some, some ideas about Chopin. Yeah. Who I, uh, I know and I mean, his uh, compositions and, and who I la love. When I was music uh, student, I, I even played. Mm -hmm. That was re really um, something and moving for me. So I think that Chopin uses in his mazurkas mostly, but not only, the same language, local language, that is played by village uh, fiddlers, singers, and uh, drummers, anybody that belongs mm -hmm. to to people, and he mentioned that in his letters, in his correspondence, he uh, also appreciated and, and loved the uh, real in crudo uh, village music. He traveled to Poland quite thoroughly, and we we even play sometimes programs with the pianist mm -hmm. that. They play some mazurka. We answered with, with village one, and then it is it becomes very clear. And one of of these uh, features that that makes it it also so common is so called rubato. Is the mm -hmm. idea how the rhythm 
rhythms shift. And when we when you play for the dance, it becomes really natural because when you, for example, when the dancer uh, puts his uh, feet higher, he needs more time yeah. to, to, to stamp. And, and it could be listening. Boom, dun, dun, dun. All these movements became so uh, visible. And when we, sometimes when we, when we prepare the, such concerts with pianists, they say, wow, it makes me understand why we uh, uh, do this huge brain work not necessary so so this is this is something very common and this is based on the language on polish language when you uh, pronounce for example my name this is the the accents could be uh, really um, recognizable and polish mm -hmm. accent is regular on the syllable second from the mm -hmm. of the end Kuszynowski, right. Kowalski, uh, Zamiata, Pamięta. Uh, and very often people singing uh, in this three beat, three steps rhythm, tam, 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 ram, tam, tam, put four uh, syllables because the words are like that, sometimes even mm -hmm. five. And that means that here you have Bum tam tam rum tam tam rai ta ta da ra di a ta da ta di a da da ra ta 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 na ra ta ta da ta da 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 na ra ta na. When you hear the talking, when you hear the language, it might might be the same with other traditional music. Mm -hmm. uh, and here, when you when you understand it, it becomes natural, simple. Uh, recognizable and this is something that Chopin loved used composed in his in his uh, compositions sometimes he even quoted short uh, phrases yeah. and in, in his times people could recognize all oh, that element of that popular song and that of, of that and in 100 years they stopped and in 200 years they have no idea that it could work like that right but so now that there are so many young musicians learning the traditional village music i imagine that there must be musicians in other genres not just classical music but pop and and uh jazz who are using uh the the lessons that they learn from polish traditional music is that part of the music scene in poland now as well yes yes this this uh, diverse music scene is growing and growing. And I have the, the impression that it's also be, be, becoming more and more recognizable in the world. Mm -hmm. mm. And there are many, many various uh, attitudes. But, and and then what I observe is, is also the growing esteem to to the souls to uh, mm, to real local village uh, masters at, at the in 90s i i was some sometimes negatively moved like they were used like uh, um, samples nothing else yeah people people or, or musicians realizers did did not have idea how to use use them better and uh, since that time, so many uh, great artists uh, used elements in very, very uh, personal, very, very beautiful way. Elements of, of that music, elements of that rhythm, both jazz musicians, pop, pop musicians. There are, it's, it seemed to be uh, real inspiration or real um, basement fundament for for uh, creation yeah that's great too because it that it will always help the music grow if it's moving you know through the other styles and and there's influence across the spectrum so that's that's wonderful to hear as well um so one of the things that i noticed in your concert was there was there were uh qu there was quite a bit of improvisation 
within some of the pieces that you played. Is that part of the village music tradition or is that a modern addition that, that uh, is part of your, uh, your training? The, that was the, this imp improvisation, that was one of, um, one of these factors that make me uh, to go to the village. Mm -hmm. made, made me uh, fascinated with this music. On this first uh, choice of, of uh, recordings from Andrzej Binkowski, each of the musicians was improvising. Mm -hmm. Some of them uh, in, in a such uh, extent that you could not recognize the melody at all. Interesting. But, but it was absolutely like jazz. Mm -hmm. Uh, even, even uh, for example, Józef Kędzierski, one of the greatest improvisers, used to say, oh, if somebody would be able to um, whistle my melody, it meant I played badly. Right. And, and the others uh, used to repeat consequently the same, uh, the same melody with very slight uh, changes. But in a, in a way that that you get in trance, just repeating and repeating and repeating. The, it depends on their character, on local tradition, or of the people needs, etc. So in there, there is one uh, small region we call it, call it Kajotse, or it is called Kajotse, where the greatest improvisers uh, played, where, where mm -hmm. they made sort of school. It was family uh, and uh, the pupils of, of uh, particular masters from Kędzierski family, from Jaźwiec, from uh, uh, some other masters, even from 19th century. So somebody had to got this idea of playing not only around the melody, but uh, playing like, like river, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was observing what was happening. And when, when it happens to me, because it's sort of state of, it's state of mind. It's not a uh, technique. You have to to uh, get some some level and then observe what's happening with this tune. So th this is uh, uh, the greatest happiness uh, for for the musician to experience uh, such state from time to time. Yeah, that's great. So. I guess there's one question that I think everyone is concerned with and, and thinking about now um, when they think of Poland is that there are so many people from the Ukrainian border coming into Poland and, and Poland Polish people are just being so kind and helpful to their Ukrainian neighbors. Um, is, is this affecting the music tradition and, and, your, and the music scene that is what what people are doing um, as musicians, as well as in their daily lives? Uh, the story is uh, luckily much longer because mm. for me, for example, one of the inspirations to focus on Polish music, to ask or to search for Polish uh, fantastic traditional music was meeting with uh, Ukrainian yeah. Ukra Ukrainian singers uh, that was Drevo and Sam from Kiev. I was organizer of uh, uh, some uh, festival, so-called, and it was com total shock what they bring as, as singers. The quality of singing, the quality of um, not only coping but de developing this the uh, original singing and recording and they were musicologists that was mm -hmm. also amazing polish musicologists were really like people in 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 white shirts uh write, writing books and, and and analyzing something and those people were pupils of village singers that they met, that they loved, that they uh, cooperate. So that was inspiration. And sen since that time, we were in uh, uh, continued uh, relationship. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the bridges that 
have has been built for these 30 years and um, made this situation as it is that we opened or, or that that we feel like brothers not only uh, because this war started but we felt that before right we, we supported each other they were part of our uh, scene they were parts parts of uh, mazukas of the world festival uh, because uh, two centuries be, uh, uh, ago we used to be one political space also this is yeah. this 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 country uh, was unity or unity that that was space for many many cultures multicultural state yeah and ukrainian or ukrainian language was one of uh, very important and we uh, how to say we um, feel part of that space especially when 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 we meet when we when we share the music and so even on this uh, Mazuka festival ended three uh, weeks ago, it was quite special. It was very Ukrainian, and there were uh, concerts, uh, workshops, and, and dances Polish Ukrainian. There, there's huge space of both nations living together for for centuries, and the same melodies could be played and sung in Polish, in Ukrainian. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Lemko language, Boyko language, uh, by gypsies, etc. Et so uh, this relationship now is based on on the long process of building bridges. Uh, mm, I personally, with with my family, we hosted uh, Ukraine family for three and a half months, and mm -hmm. it was great time to also to, sh to share these uh, stories uh, sources mm, yeah it, 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 it's from this time it might see like mm, very near cultures or like one culture yeah. with very, very we understand each other without translation when we when we talk slowly mm -hmm. it, this is also important it, it is yeah so we we support them as much as we can we organize events especially for for them we uh, try to let them sing play have workshops as, as much as possible to feel here as at home and to to feel safe to feel needed to feel welcome which is just true that, yeah. that, that's it yeah the world is is grateful to to polish people and people in the other countries around ukraine for for helping in this situation so we thank you for that as well um so is so i'd like to ask at the end of an interview if there's anything that i didn't ask about that you would want to tell our audiences um so is is there a, a, a anything more about the music that you want to tell us Perhaps I repeat myself, but uh, this music and any traditional music is not just notes. It's it's not just melodies, not just rhythms. It's um, the complete word of uh, personalities, of masters, of students, of relationships, of emotions that created the, that uh, music. It is language which which uh, used to be language of communication language of uh, mm, that helped in life that express life that uh, express personalities and my idea is to continue that in this scale not only not uh, not as a inspiration musical inspiration but as a world in which uh, we could be surrounded by music surrounded by by dance could be part of that and could pass it could use it to uh, for needs of our uh, our uh, our people our uh, everybody public it is 
I'm I'm really curious uh, when when we play concerts. I'm really curious how and in in which points this music moved people. What connections? What what ideas uh, opened and what emotions opened in 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 minds and in bodies when the the body starts moving. It's a sign. Okay, we perhaps we can be complete, complete person, not only with our minds, but with the whole, uh, whole man, whole, whole, whole person, and whole mm -hmm. society. Because this whole means not alone. It, it also means together. That as as we need each other in the band, as we need uh, dancers, as we as we need singers. That that makes. Uh, sense that makes it the temperature. Thank you so much. So my friend Thea has asked me if I would um, ask you about the paper cut as well that's on the wall behind you, the cutting. Uh, if you could tell us a little bit about it. Ah uh, yes, uh, the paper cut the, is made by uh, village artists from Kul Kulpia region. This is northeast from Warsaw, and. Ship scissors worked great for that. Everybody from our foundation, from uh, Mazukas of the World Foundation, got it one year as a present uh, from her, as uh, as that uh, edition was devoted to her region and to uh, trad traditional music from Kulpia re region. I don't know if it is visible enough. I think we can see it. So thank you so much for showing that to us. Very, very beautiful and, and very personal. Well, I, I think we've come to the end of our interview. So I just want to thank you one more time. Janusz Pluzinowski, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you for listening to this music. Thank you and welcome to Poland. Yeah, we now we all want to come and visit when uh, when we can because the music is so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you a lot.